Hey, this is Cody Horton here with Diverse Recruiting Experts. I've spent the last couple of decades working in talent acquisition organizations and helping companies with their diversity recruiting talent, developing recruiters, and really helping companies create that inclusive workforce. Our company today focuses on helping our clients with the top of the funnel. We go out, we source, we screen, and we present a diverse slate of candidates. Wow, we've got some crazy times right now. This is one of the um, uh, most challenging recruiting periods that I've ever seen in the whole time that I've been in recruiting, and that's over a couple of decades, probably almost three decades. Uh, this has been a busy year. I know that recruiters are tired, hiring managers are tired, candidates are tired, people are taking breaks. Um, so what I'm hoping to do today is just to share a few things that will help you as you finish out this year and you get ready to kickstart your 2022 hiring. So one of the things that I, I wanna talk about, I'm gonna use this mnemonic. I'm a big fan of using acronyms to remember things. And the mnemonic is PAID, P-A-I-D. And what the P is, it's for prioritize. The A is for align. The I is for interview. And the D is for decide. And so I'll talk a little bit about that as it relates to hiring directly. But one of the main things that I, I want to talk to you initially about is you really have to prioritize what you're going to finish in 2021. Is it hiring? Is it training? Is it working on your systems and your processes? Once you make that decision, then you'll be able to focus on the task and the actions that you need to take to finish the year. Today, I'm going to talk about hiring because our clients are trying to finish the year strong. I recently did a survey on LinkedIn and 75% of the respondents said they were gonna keep hiring through the end of 2021. So I wanna share a little bit about that. So when you think about paid, I always say get paid because in our business, that's what we do. Uh, what you wanna look at is how do you prioritize and everything is not a priority. Recruiters know this really well. So you've gotta get your business and your interviewers to really prioritize. So identify the priority roles that you're gonna work on. That's a first step. Once you know those priority roles, then you also need to identify what are the must haves for the requirements for that role. Because if you're trying to continue to hire, say like you did in 2019, you're gonna miss the, miss the mark. It's really competitive out there today. And so being able to take the time to prioritize the roles that you know you're gonna to try to fill this year, to prioritize the priorities, the must-haves, and just get rid of a lot of those nice-to-haves that are there. And then you wanna be able to remove steps in your hiring process. Right now, a number of companies are still hiring in an old process, but we're in a new world today. And you've gotta remove some of that bloat that's in your process. If you've got too many steps, candidates fall out, your teams, it's a slow process. Now, what I'm telling our team and our clients is don't panic, right? You think, oh, I can't finish this. I can't fill this role by the end of the year. But here are some things that you need to keep in mind. There are 43 calendar days left in 2021. I know that's not working days, but if you're smart about how you work, you'll be able to take full advantage of those 43 days. So the first thing to do with getting paid is prioritize. So what you wanna do is get your pipeline going because if you don't have people in the pipeline and in the funnel, you're not gonna make the hire. Some of the low hanging fruit are to target people who applied for your job. They've already said, hey, I'm interested in the role. Can you interview me? And so prioritize those people who are in your pipeline. The next thing is, solicit what I call warm employer referrals. And what that means is ask your employees for referrals and then ask them to make the introduction to the candidates that they think are a match for your role. So make sure the employees understand what the role is, what you're looking for in the role, and then have them do that warm introduction. That'll save time, the back and forth of you going to get people. The next thing you wanna do is Go after those former candidates. If you've got candidates that you've interviewed and for whatever reason, they didn't make it through your process, assuming that they're qualified, then
then go back and get those candidates and see if you can engage them and see if they want to be able, if they want to be part of your organization, or at least they want to explore the opportunity. And then I know we've talked about this, but not many companies do this, is go after those former employees who left on good terms and are rehirable. So get that list of people, go after them and see if they're interested in new opportunities. Right now, what's happening with candidates is they're pausing, reflecting. They're deciding, hey, is this an opportunity for me to do a job that's going to align with my lifestyle? And we're seeing that quite a bit. You got the great resignation, you got people not working, you've got this hidden talent market. So give it a shot and go after some of those folks. The other thing that's gonna give you a lot of lift is to get help from specialists. So companies that source, and go after passive candidates, either give your sourcers the time to do it or engage a company to start that sourcing process so that you can get those candidates identified, you can get them in your process, and there is a chance that you can get them hired. When you start going after that passive talent, use some tools to automate your outreach and to automate your engagement. Use tools like Jim. Jim is an email automation tool that will allow you to continue to send messages to candidates while they're thinking about it. You can use tools like Interseller. Interseller allows you to not only reach outreach to candidates, but very similar to Jim, it's gonna let you see open rate, response rates, all kinds of information that will give you insight that's gonna help you continue to move forward and engage that passive talent in a way that you normally wouldn't be able to engage them. Candidates are definitely in that stage right now where they're not looking at open, looking at opening email, but all you need is one person to make the hire. And that one person that you're looking for might actually be in that pool of talent that you're looking for. I also recommend that you engage talent in various channels, diversity talent. I recommend you go to our website and download our diversity sourcing guide because we've got some resources there where you can post a job, it's got a list of organizations that you can engage and you could source to find that talent. And there's some tips and tricks to help you increase that diverse talent. I'm certainly available to answer any questions. So feel free to, to email me or reach out to me on LinkedIn. I can get you more information. So those are the things that I would highlight in the, the P part of paid. So let's talk about the A. These all have to go together. A is for align. You need to get alignment with your recruiters, your interviewers, and the teams who are going to be assessing talent. And make sure that you've got the best people on those interview teams so that you can get the max, so you can maximize your interviews. Um, there's some importance in every role. What you want to do is really decide what's critical in this role. What should the sourcers, the recruiters, and the interviewers be focused on? and really get alignment on what that means. Because right now what happens is recruiters go out and they find people only to find out that they're not aligned with the hiring managers and that prolongs the process. And it also creates a lot of unnecessary work that needs to happen. So right up front, get that alignment, make sure you understand the must haves. I would eliminate the nice to haves. Also, Make sure you understand what are the skills required. And then from a core values perspective, make sure you know what your company is looking for when it comes to core values and when it comes to the attributes that you're looking for in a candidate. One way to ask that is how do people get work done in this company? One way might be they drive for results or they help first or they have leadership and integrity. Those are things that you want to evaluate because those core values are more critical to your company than just the skills. You can teach the skills. So you've got prioritization, you've got alignment, and in alignment, two big questions that are coming up because these are candidate objections that we're seeing is, can I do this job remotely? And what's the pay? Is it going to be competitive? It's important to get aligned on those two questions early so that you don't waste your time on candidates who may not be in, in geography as you're starting to hire. So the I in paid stands for interview. Prioritize the roles, get aligned on what you're looking for, and then interview them. 
get agreement from everyone that they'll block time on their calendars. Right now, my managers may say, hey, I don't have time to block time on my calendar. I'm really busy. And I wanna encourage you to, if you've got a question, put your question in the chat box. We'll be keeping an eye on the chat box here. Um, Jesus will be, be looking at that and we'll definitely leave some time for questions uh, toward the end. So make sure that as you're scheduling, when you block the calendar out, use tools like Microsoft Bookings or Calendly or other calendar link tools that allow the candidate or someone else to put that interview on your calendar. I know these sound like recruiter 101 things, but the number of people that don't do this, it's pretty high. This has saved me a ton of time and it allows me to make sure that I block the time out for interviews and things that I know are critical. The other thing I touched on this in the beginning is you've got to eliminate those unnecessary steps in your hiring process. Some of the steps might be, we want every interviewer to do one hour interviews with our candidates. One way to reduce that time is to combine interviews and start to do more panel interviews. The other way is to cut the time on the interview short. Another thing that you can do is if you've got an assessment and you want the candidate to take the assessment before you ever talk to them, um, you may wanna flip it and have the candidate talk to you first just to get them interested in the role, then they're more likely to be interested in the assessment. So look at your process. And if you've got, if you've got steps that are not critical, then you wanna remove those steps or at least temporarily reduce those steps so that you can speed up your process. This is a big one, being inclusive. The reason I said you want your best interviewers on these interviews is because you want someone who understands the value of a standardized interview and they understand how to be inclusive and mitigate their bias. I teach a whole course on, on inclusive interviewing, uh, but the big things are, is you wanna make sure that your interviewers are doing the full interviewing and not letting one of their bias get in the way and then writing a candidate off who might be a great candidate or even worse, you get a candidate and the interviewer really clicks with the candidate because they're like me, it's the like me bias. And they move the candidate forward in the process, but they don't ask the questions that they need to ask to really assess and evaluate that candidate. So they miss information and then they waste everyone's time because everyone's interviewing this candidate who really wasn't qualified. They just had a good rapport with the interview interviewer. Make sure you're asking all the candidates the same question and learn how to stick with those candidates so you fully understand what the candidate said and how they demonstrated the expertise or the competency or the skill that you're looking for. And the D, the D is probably the biggest and the most important one because this, this is where companies freeze and hiring managers freeze. The D stands for decide. Once you've actually interviewed a candidate, make a decision. Make sure that you're in a position to evaluate the feedback from that interview and then make a hiring decision and don't drag it out because what you're trying to do is if you are in the situation where you're comparing a candidate against another candidate, that's a big error. You wanna be able to compare those candidates against the must haves and the requirements that you talked about. This is pretty basic, but we're all guilty of it. We try to stack rate the candidates. So don't stack rate candidates, unless you're just stacking them against the criteria for the role. Stop shopping for candidates and actually start hiring for candidates. I'm, I'm doing some screens right now. And in this process, I've gone through a number of candidates who all meet the, who a lot of them meet the qualifications, but the client, is actually shopping for candidates because they're comparing each candidate to the other candidate versus comparing them to the role requirements. The other thing is that you wanna do is spend some time making sure that you're focused on the right values and attributes for your company. You can hire and train somebody for the skill. So if someone has a deficiency in a skill area, but they meet your competencies and they fit your values, then 
you might want to consider bringing them on and just teaching them the skills. How, what's, what's the cost of vacancy, right? If you leave a role open because you're looking for the perfect candidate, what's the cost of that when you could have probably hired somebody who might be deficient in a skill and you could have taught them the skill? So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause for just a second before I go on just to see if there are any questions. Uh, let me just check the chat. So we've got one question here from Steph. Uh, Steph said is, what's the best way to bridge 2021 efforts to impact 2022? Yeah, that's a great question, Steph. I really appreciate you ask, asking that question. Um, one of the things that's most critical is to be intentional. So I talked about paid, right? Prioritize. Um, Make sure you are. Make sure you're doing the prioritization. Uh, make sure you are aligning on what you need. Make sure you're interviewing and then being decisive. Um, I call this paid more. So as you're thinking about 2022, what you want to do in 2022 is start in 2021 by sourcing and identifying that talent early. It's never too late to start knowing who the talent is before you ever know about the, about the requisition. If your team is gonna be on vacation and not doing the sourcing, get a partner to help you do that sourcing so that you've got that funnel moving forward when, you, when 2022 comes back. Because we all know, we've been in recruiting for a while, so we already know hiring managers are gonna come back and they're wanna know, where's my candidates, where's my pipeline? And so start the sourcing process in 2021 get a handle on what the business is looking to do in 2022 so you can build your talent agenda to make sure that you're going after that talent. And then here's some actual practical things that you could do to get ready for 2022. I mentioned tools like Interseller and Jim. Work with your recruitment marketing or your internal company marketing and get the message right. What message do you want candidates to get? You want them to know you're hiring. You want them to know what kind of company you're in. So this is called paid more. So the M is get the messaging right. Know what you have, get an inclusive and compelling message that fits a broader set of candidates. The other thing that you wanna do is the O is for operationalize with intentionality. So you wanna be intentional about who you're reaching out to, what the message says, and you wanna do it in a systematic way so that you're not, it's not one off, right? You've created a process and you've operationalized that messaging engine. The other thing that you wanna do in 2022 is do the reporting, track your open, your response, your red messages, track so you know where you are, track who's in your pipeline. So get those reports so you can make some data-driven decisions on tweaking the messaging, tweaking the places your outreach, review your data from 2021 to see how did we do on hires? What was our interview to offer ratio? What was our submission to interview ratio? How many people did we actually have to source to get someone in the process who wanted to talk with us? And how long did it take us to get those people moving forward? So use that data from 2021 to move forward because if you're using 2019 data, Chances are it's going to be outdated or 2018 data. So the data from 2021 will be really helpful in helping you evaluate how you're going to work your pipelines, evaluate how you're going to deal with messaging, and it'll help you make the data-driven decision to improve your candidate engagement and your candidate response rates. So that's the, that's the R in more. And then the E in more is execute, keep moving, review and revise. So this is gonna be an iterative process. In the first six months of 2022, you're gonna to have to iterate. You're gonna to have to use data from 2021. You're gonna to have to use new data from 2022. And then you're gonna to have to evaluate and execute on different approaches as you go forward. And take a little bit of time and experiment. Those are things that are gonna help you continue to move forward as you deal with uh, your efforts on 2022. I know I gave you a lot Stephanie, in that one, let me just see if there are another, if there's another question. Uh, I want to be respectful of time because we promised you 20 minutes and we're about at the 20 minute mark now. Any other questions uh, that we see in the in the chat box? So 
one of the questions is what are the top three things we can do for the rest of 2021? Yeah, I think that's a that's a great question. Uh, so if I had to, to boil it down to three things, one is make sure that you engage your ATS. Look at those applicants and look at your job postings and people who are already in your applicant tracking system. There might be a person in there that you already know that you could go after. So that's gonna allow you to kind of really quick expedite um, the talent, the pipeline. The other thing is to do those warm referrals, get employees and especially new hires that you might've just hired, get them to give you a referral and do a warm referral and an introduction. That's gonna be another thing that you could do. And I would say the third thing is go after those boomerangs, right? Go after people who used to work at your company who want to go to, who want to work for your company again, or they're just looking for something different. Uh, one thing that you might do if you've got a role and you've got to get the work done, you may look at a contractor or a temp or someone on one of the gig platforms like Upwork or Fiverr or one of those, one of those platforms to fill in the work. Um, and I think one of probably one of the one of the best things that you could do is get, get familiar with email automation tools or outreach automation tools. I know you get, I gave you, gave you five, you asked for three, but when you get familiar with these automation tools, it allows you to continue your outreach messaging while your sourcers are continuing to source. And that messaging is going out while they're sourcing. I'm happy to talk about that. We got on our team, we've got some experts in that area who, who certainly could help you with that. So another question, is oh yeah how do you how do you reduce burnout from a tired team um well i see training coaching mentoring time off i you know um what i would say is time off is probably where i would prioritize it uh, and when i say time off i mean give the people on your team the flexibility to work the times that they that are going to work best for their life one of the challenges that we're dealing with right now is people are always on because they're on Zoom, they're on Teams, they're on some kind of electronic means of communication. So give them the time to work as their lifestyle allows. You want to allow people to feel like they're getting development. So doing training, I think that's a great point here, uh, doing training and getting, getting coaching and mentoring so people can get better at doing things that they may not have done before or maybe they've done it a certain way for a long time and they need a way to change what they're doing. And then I see another question. So looks like we've got, yep, don't see another question in there. Any other, any other questions that, that anyone has that, that I can answer for you? I received that last one in private mode, but I think it's a really good question. What big mistakes are you seeing in companies right now? Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, that's a great question. So one of the big, big mistakes that I'm seeing uh, companies make is they're trying to do business as usual. We're in a totally different market. Some companies think that we're going to go back to the way it was, but we're not. And and so they're trying to do business as usual. The other thing is they're trying to do everything themselves. Uh, when you're trying to do everything yourself, there's just no way to get it done. So I, I, my recommendation is to get specialists, right? Um, if, you need, if you don't have a sourcing team, don't necessarily go build your own sourcing team unless you're committed to that. If you're trying to hire diverse talent, uh, don't try to build your own diversity sourcing team. Um, go out and get people who can help help do that. There are a lot of companies that do that. That's certainly what we do. Um, but go out and get people who can help you do that or join a group that can help you. You know, you can just bounce ideas off of. Uh, you don't have to do it. You're not in it by yourself. Everyone's having the same problem. Uh, one of the other big things that I see companies have a problem with is they have not reduced the complexity and the number of steps in the hiring process. There's a lot of bloat in the hiring process. I heard someone talk about if you went to the air, airport, if you overstuffed your suitcase and took it to the airport, 
and you had stuff hanging out of the suitcase, you, you've got to take some stuff out of the suitcase or one, you're going to get charged for it. And two, they're not going to let you fly like that. And so take some of the things out of your suitcase, take some of the things off your plate. It's always difficult to do because we think everything's a priority, but be in that position where you're prioritizing, right? This goes back to how do you do paid, right? How do you make sure that you prioritize, align, interview, and decide? The first, the hardest part of this is to prioritize. How do you know what to take off your plate? So I think that's the one of the big, those are some of the biggest issues is just continuing to try to get everything done. And you've got a finite amount of time, right? You got 43 days left of calendar time. So that's a lot less actual working day time. So if you got to get creative on how you do that, um, but you're not going to get everything done. So by prioritizing it, it's going to allow you to really accomplish something and then know what you're going to kick into 2022 and be prepared for that. So I'm looking to see, I don't know, Jesus, do you see any other questions? Or are we, were we good on questions for now? We are good on questions for now. Okay. And I want to be respectful of everyone's time. So, so if I had to, you know, if I had to employ you to do anything, um, make sure you reach out to me, um, go to our website, diverse recruiting, diverse recruiting experts.com. Send me an email if you want to Cody at diverse recruiting experts.com. But if you go to the website, you'll be able to download uh, a more extensive uh, white, a more extensive document on the things I'm talking about today. That'll go into more detail. You'll also be able to download our, diversity sourcing guide and other information that's going to help you move forward with your with your hiring, not only for the end of this year, but into next year. So I appreciate you taking the time to join us. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for thanks for joining. Take care.